And now we move on to Medivo, which has one of the coolest theme songs in the game, bar none. Uh, should we change it? Uh, let's change the toasters. Toasters are pretty big and thick and awesome. Alright, and we should be able to get our... Oh, well, as long as we're not jumping into floating swords or anything, we should be able to get our hip-hop back soon. Okay. That guy's gonna respawn, isn't he, if I look up... Oh, yep. Knew he was coming back down the pipeline. But I just want to kind of sit here and listen to the music for a minute. And that background, look at the rain back there. So well done. This game is just beautiful. And this level is like the prime example of that beauty. You got the turtle silhouette and the rain through the window there. That's a great effect. Oh my god. And we are on the final planet. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is this is going to be a fun jump. We're on the final planet of episode one, which means there's going to be a boss coming up here pretty soon. So, okay, yeah, I've got this though. I can actually run over. I can actually run over a two-space pit. Holy cow, Jazz is fast. There we go. Got our birdie man back. No guarantees on how long he's going to last around here though. I tend to get kind of careless in this world. Damn you sword. The swords are really annoying enemies. They they really they really chat my ass. They are some annoying ass shit. Any going through the wall here? I don't need that shield, so I think you actually have to access that from the other side. Not that it's going to be worth it, really, at that point, because I'll probably still have this thing. Although, never... <laughs> I didn't even get to say never say never. Jeez, game. You could at least give me a second before... Jinx me. This is where your rapid fire missile is coming really handy. That hallway was full of enemies. Not that you could tell or anything because I had all this going on. The rapid fire missiles. Okay. This is one of those few areas, especially in the early going, where you actually want to move kind of slowly. Uh, can I actually get through the wall or anything? Okay. I guess those don't actually hurt. They're, they must be fake spikes. Huh. Okay, well, these are probably very real spikes, but sometimes you'll encounter things like that. It's pretty rare, even for this game, but sometimes you will encounter things like that. Fake spikes are a fake obstacle that allows you to reach something else. This wasn't lifted straight from Sonic or anything. I'm really sorry about the Sonic comparisons. It's not fair to keep comparing this game to Sonic. Because it's plenty great in its own right. And it does plenty of awesome things that Sonic doesn't. First of all, it gives him a gun. Which by itself, just holy crap. That's amazing enough. And it gives him three different kinds of ammo. Jazz Jackrabbit is way cooler than Sonic the Hedgehog ever was. Okay, one of these we're going to be... Oh, no, 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 no. Why am I so worried about getting hit? I don't have a bird with me. One of these... There we go. I was going to say, we're able to go up in one of those. And then one of these... Okay, yeah. For some reason, we can go up in there. There's a lot of secret passages that lead to nothing in this game as well. Another hallmark of this particular game. I think there would be enemies here probably on a harder setting. Which means we would definitely want to use these launchers that we're picking up. But we're not really to the point where strategy plays a role yet, where we need to use launchers. And now, we're on an airboard. This thing is usually temporary, though sometimes it glitches out and we're able to have it for the entire level. But you get to ride around for a prescribed length of time on a hoverboard. All that's missing now is Huey Lewis's The Power of Love. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Be real careful around the spikes. Invisible floor. Give myself a carrot. Yeah, this is usually where you're going to lose the airborne if you're going to lose it. But it's not. It's going to let me keep it today. All right. That is uh, especially handy, I think, for the uh, end of the level here, which is a very wide open space. This is. We're still on the first level here, right? I think we are. Alright, eh, 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 eh. Alright. 
yeah, usually you don't get to keep your hoverboard at this point, because you can see you've got plenty of safe ground. It's like, what's even really the point of hanging on to this thing? So you even have a spring that would let you get up there, but we can just fly up there and get a ton of carrots. Alright, and we can fly uh, right over this segment. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you get to keep your your hoverboard and it really ends up cheesing things. See, like, you've got this big ol' open space up here. Okay, I'm... Yeah, okay, that's kind of misleading. I'm, can you only reach that with the airboard? It's like, haha, bragging rights, you can reach this place with the airboard. Good for you, sucker. Thanks for breaking our awesome hoverboard. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too concerned about enemies there, actually. Whee! Look at my awesome manicured fingernails. What are you doing, game? Okay, yeah, it's being all loady and stuff. Boo! Now, this is really cool here. This little faux castle part right here. Not that there's anything useful or cool down here. You can just bounce down. And the little t tiny turtles that are like an inch big... They don't actually hurt you, they're just there to run around. Although you can just be a heartless asshole and kill them. The way the manual describes it, this game... I think by the manual's description, this is the tortoise and the hare 3,000 years later, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because... Oh yeah! Wow, midpoint already, damn. Yeah, you can just charge through this part and it's kind of awesome. Although I don't want to really press my luck, I don't think. And I'm kind of wasting my time with what I do have here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I kind of wasted that, I think. Hey, but there's our, uh... There's our bonus level, so we'll get to play one of those again. And through, and through, and yes. Oh, yeah, now we can actually go up into the little castle parts and collect the, uh... Chalice Goblet Trinket. Man, I bet those things go for, go for high price on the, on the black market. But what was I saying? What was I saying? I was talking about something fairly important, I think. Oh well, if it was important, I'd probably remember it. Maybe I can go back and review the tape later. Yeah, this is the one we want to get across to. Toasters, baby. All toasters toast toast. That's not true. All toasters toast bread, which then becomes toast. Jesus, Mario! Although I wouldn't really expect much from Hotel Mario Mario, so... Alright, oh, there we go. Some much-needed shieldage. I wonder if we can get a hip-hop in this level, since I lost mine, like, five seconds into having him last time. Just didn't appreciate what I had. <laughs> oh, okay. How you doing? The enemies in this game have names, but I don't really think that the enemy names are all that important. Besides, what's really going to compete with flying sword or walking helmet retard? Oh, that's not nice, because sometimes physically disabled people, or mentally disabled people, wear helmets. That wasn't nice. I didn't mean to do that. Although, I'm probably making it worse by casting light on it, so... We're just gonna drop it here and be like, Oh, yay! Swinging ball and chain! Yay! Yeah, this is what... Oh, yeah. This is what rapid fire is really useful for right here. Not that you would know it, because they just give you an invincibility thing anyway. Come on! Let me up in the secret passage where I can get my little birdie friend back. There we go. I thought I'd get him back at some point. And uh, if we want to, this is where we can actually use launchers. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, at least it registered the shield hit and not the bird hit. Sometimes if you get hit with a shield, it will, uh, if you have a shield and a bird, it's kind of a crapshoot as to what it'll register. Sometimes the bird will get hit, and sometimes the shield will get hit, so it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit of a gamble. So really, the idea is to just not get hit at all. That'll, that'll save you some trouble for sure. Man, those blue springs are really launchy. And this is probably the toughest part of the level right here, walking along these things which kind of dip and weave you. Whoa, hello. I would like to be able to reach the boss, with my hip-hop intact, which it looks like I'm going to do. Excellent. Only 92% of the items, but we got the one that mattered, which is the bonus gym. And every second level has a bonus gym, so you can play up to three bonus levels in an episode, but we only did two. 
and we're probably usually only going to do two, because if you play a secret level, you end up missing out on the... Holy crap. Boy, this is being really touchy. These red pads make you jump in the air, which they don't really use that to any great effect. There actually is a way to get booted out of the bonus stage without running up on time. There are exit signs, which we'll see a lot more of in later bonus stages. Woo! I actually will probably start ignoring bonus stages just so we can play them all in one run at the end of the game, like we did the last time I LP'd this game. There we go, there's an exit sign. But like everything else, you can easily go around it. It is easily circumvented. But yeah, last time I played all the bonus stages in one run. And... Let's see. And it was really long, but at least most of the bonus stages were fresh that way. And we get an extra life going into the first battle with Devon Shell, which is going to be ridiculously easy because we have a shitload of ammo. And every time you approach a boss, you get this little, I don't know what it looks like. That's no mood. It's a question mark. Alright, and these things, we do get a little bit of ammunition. Should be able to take them out pretty easily. This is a two-part boss, which is kind of unusual, considering that it's the first boss of the game. But he goes down like a sack of rocks. You could get him to do some strategic drilling for carrots and stuff, I suppose, but we're gonna keep our we're gonna keep our hands off the keyboard for now, because these things tend to pass by really quickly if you if you press any keys. There is Nick Stadler's signature in the corner down there. Good drawing though. Alright. Uh oh. Yeah, she's a, she's a cheeky sort of princess, not like that damsel in distress peach. They made her edgy, and they gave her cleavage out the bazoo. She's got some gazongas, definitely. No, let's not. But yeah, we're technically going to have to keep her waiting, because we're not going to get to episode 2 until next time. Alright, and I made, a, I made a high score. Oh, I've actually scored higher in the past, but... Surely the, oh, this is the high score for episode one. Okay, I see. Oh, well, I, I guess I'll just go through making tons of points and typing my name in where possible. Yay, I get to type in my high score. All right, but that's it for episode one. Next time, we will start in on episode two of Jazz Jackrabbit. Once again, of course, on the easy difficulty. Episode two is Ballistic Bunny. Whoa, big old smart guy with crazy stayed up all night eyes in the face. But Jazz ain't scared. Look at him there, standing there all intrepid and fearless. I don't think I'd be the same in that situation. No way. No way at all, whatsoever. We'll see you guys next time.